Hello friends, welcome to next lecture in kinematics of machines. So in this video's lecture, we shall see about the gear trains. That is, we shall see what is the definition of gear train and also we shall see the types of gear trains. So friends, please stay tuned with this video lecture. Before we begin with this lecture, I request you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not yet subscribed. Please click the bell icon for the latest notification of the videos on this YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram and like our Facebook page Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. The links are in the description below. So friends, let's begin with this video lecture. So first we shall see the definition of a gear train. So here a gear train is defined as a system of gears which transmits motion from one shaft to another shaft. So if there are two shafts or two or more shafts say for example and you want to transmit motion from one shaft to another shaft or from first shaft to the fourth shaft if there are any two intermediate shafts then we make use of gears on each of the shafts and those arrangement of gears to transmit motion from one shaft to another is called as a gear train. The best example of gear train is your automobile gearbox where on the central shaft and the other surrounding shafts we have the different gears mounted and based on the gears which you engage you get that particular speed. So for a 5 speed vehicle or the 5 speed gearbox we have 5 different combinations of gears and hence we can say that is a gear train. So now we shall see what are the different types of gear trains. So first we get is the simple gear train. Then we have the compound gear train. We have the reverted gear train and lastly we have the epicyclic gear train. So now we shall see one by one what are the different types of gear trains. So first let us see the simple gear train. So in the simple gear train you can see here when there is only one gear on each of the shafts as shown in this figure that is if O1, O2, O3, O4 are four different shafts here the axis of the shaft is perpendicular to the screen so this will be the gear which you can see here. So this type of arrangement of gears that is one gear on each shaft we call it a simple gear train. So let gear 1 be the driver gear that is it is connected to an external power source so we call it as the driver gear. So this gear is in contact with gear 2 and this gear drives gear 2 and because of the rotation of gear 2 the gear 3 is rotated and because of rotation of gear 3 again gear 4 is rotated. That is the motion from shaft 1 to shaft 4 is obtained. So now let N1 be the speed of gear 1, N2 be the speed of gear 2, N3 be the speed of gear 3 and N4 be the speed of gear 4. And similarly the number of teeth on either of the gears is T1 on gear 1, T2 on gear 2, T3 on gear 3 and T4 on gear 4. So first with respect to the speed and number of teeth we shall determine the velocity ratio. So we have already discussed in the previous lecture on how to determine the velocity ratio. So you can refer to the video which will appear on the top right corner about the velocity ratio. So in short velocity ratio of two gears is given as the ratio of the speed of the driver gear to that of the driven gear will be equal to the ratio of the teeth or the number of teeth on the driven gear to that of the number of teeth on the driver gear. So now with this concept in mind for the first combination that is for gear 1 and gear 2 we have velocity ratio as n1 by n2 will be equal to t2 by t1. For the second combination that is for gear 2 and gear 3 we have velocity ratio as n2 by n3 equal to t3 by t2. And for the fourth or the third combination you can say that is for gear 3 and gear 4 we have velocity ratio as n3 by n4 will be equal to t4 by t3. So now to obtain the total velocity ratio of this system we just multiply this velocity ratio that is multiplication of the LHS will be equal to multiplication of the RHS. 
that is n1 by n2 into n2 by n3 into n3 by n4 will be equal to t2 by t1 into t3 by t2 into t4 by t3. So now cancelling the common factor here n2 in the denominator and n2 in the numerator similarly n3 in the denominator and n3 in the numerator in the LHS and t2 in numerator and t2 in denominator and t3 in numerator and t3 in denominator in the RHS we get n1 by n4 will be equal to t4 by t1. So with this what we can say as it is clear that the velocity ratio so this is the velocity ratio which we have obtained is independent of the intermediate gears that is it just depends on the number of gears on the driver and number of gears on the driven or the speed of the driver to that of the speed of the driven. So this gears 2 and 3 are known as the idlers. Clear? Now if the direction of rotation of the first gear and the last gear is same. Say for example we remove this gear 4 so gear 3 will be the last gear. So here direction of gear 1 and the last gear 3 will be same. So if this is the case we can say the number of idlers will be odd in nature. Clear? That is if the direction of rotation of the first and the last gear is same the number of intermediate gear or the idlers will be odd. Now if the direction of the first and the last gear are opposite then the number of idlers will be even. So if you see here for this four gear system we have the direction of first gear and the last gear as opposite. So idlers are 2 and 2 is an even number. So direction of rotation of first and the last gear is opposite then the number of intermediate gears will be even. So now here one thing we need to note here the two statements which I explained to you just now that is the direction of rotations are same and when the direction of rotations are opposite this condition is true only when the gears are having external teeth that is the teeth are mounted on the surface of the gear and not as the internal teeth and the centers O1, O2, O3 and O4 will be fixed relative to each other. The whole system may be moving but there is no relative motion between these centers. So this is about the simple gear train. So next we shall see the compound gear train. So you can see when there are more than one gear on the shaft as shown here in this figure it is called as the compound gear train. So gear 1 is the driver gear, gear 2 and gear 3 are mounted on the single shaft A, gear 4 and gear 5 are mounted on the single shaft B and gear C is mounted on shaft C. Gear 3 and gear 5 will act as the driver gears for gear 4 and gear 6. The reason is there is no any other gear which is meshing with gear 3 to make it move or there is no any other gear meshing with gear 5 to make it move. That is gear 3 will have an independent motion and that motion is transmitted to gear 4 hence gear 3 becomes driver. Gear 5 will also have an independent motion and it will transfer motion to gear 6 and that becomes the driver over here. Now you might ask me one question the motion of gear 3 will be because of the motion of gear 2 and the motion of gear 5 will be because of the motion of gear 4 that is correct but if you see here gear 2 moves because gear 1 is meshed to gear 2 and the rotation of gear 1 will cause rotation of gear 2 but no other gear is meshed to gear 3 which will make it to rotate but gear 3 will rotate because gear 2 is mounted on that same shaft and rotation of this gear 2 will make gear 3 rotate without being meshed and hence we say gear 3 rotates independently and it acts as the driver gear for gear 4 and same is the case with gear 5. So now with this in mind for each of these combinations we shall obtain the velocity ratios that is when gear 1 and gear 2 are meshed we get velocity ratio as n1 by n2 will be equal to t2 by t1. 
For gears 3 and 4, the velocity ratio will be N3 by N4 equal to T4 by T3. For gears 5 and 6, we have N5 by N6 equal to T6 by T5. Now since gear 3 and gear 2 are mounted on the same shaft, we can say the speed of gear 2 will be same as that of the speed for gear 3. That is N2 will be equal to N3. Similarly, gear 5 and gear 4 are mounted on the single shaft B. So we can say speed of gear 4 will be same as that of gear 5. So N4 will be equal to N5. So here, to obtain the velocity ratio of this complete system, we multiply these velocity ratios. That is, in the LHS, we get N1 by N2 into N3 by N4 into N5 by N6. So this is equal to T2 by T1 into T4 by T3 into T6 by T5. Now here in the LHS, we know that N2 is equal to N3. So this denominator and this numerator gets cancelled. And we know that N4 is equal to N5. So this N4 and N5, that is N4 in the denominator and N5 in the numerator gets cancelled. So ultimately what we get is N1 by N6, but nothing gets cancelled in the number of teeth or the ratio of teeth. So this remains as it is in the RHS. So here we can say that the velocity ratio of the system is dependent on the speed of first and last gear only. That is velocity ratio can be determined by the speed of, if we know the speed of the first and last gear only, or we need to know the number of teeth on each and every gear. So this is about the compound gear. Next we shall see the revolted gear or revolted gear train. So here, revolted gear train is similar to the compound gear train, but the only condition over here is when the axis of the first driver gear is coaxial with the axis of the last driven gear, then the gear train is known as a revolted gear. So here, from the figure we can see, <coughs> gear 1 and gear 2 are meshed together, gear 3 and gear 4 are meshed together, Gear 2 and gear 3 are on the single shaft, but gear 1 and gear 4 are not on the single shaft, but they are on different shaft, but their axis is same or you can say it is a coaxial. So here from the center of the shaft to the meshing line, we determine here this distance as R2 and from the center of this shaft to the edge of this gear, we determine R1. That is R1 is the radius of gear 1, R2 is the radius of gear 2. R3 is radius of gear 3 and R4 is radius of gear 4. So from this figure we have R1 plus R2 is equal to R3 plus R4. So R1 plus R2 is equal to R3 plus R4. And T1 plus T2 will be equal to T3 plus T4. Because since the circular pitch of all these gears that is 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 are assumed to be same. That is circular pitch of gear 2 and gear 4 will be same and gear 1 and gear 3 will be same. So we can write T1 plus T2 will be equal to T3 plus T4. So we know that what are this T1, T2, T3, T4. They are the number of teeth on gear 1, gear 2, gear 3 and gear 4 respectively. Now velocity ratio for this system we can write it as the velocity ratio for this combination into velocity ratio for this combination that is N1 upon N2 into N3 by N4 will be equal to T2 by T1 into T4 by T3. And here N2 will be equal to N3 because both these gears are mounted on the same shaft. So here N2 and N3 will get cancelled. That is N2 in the denominator and N3 in the numerator gets cancelled. So we get that equation as N1 by N4 equal to T2 by T1 into T4 by T3. Next we shall see the last type of gear train that is epicyclic gear train. So here in the epicyclic gear train the axis of the gear wheels rotate about the axis of other wheels in addition to the revolution around the respective axis. So what does this mean is if we have two gears that is two simple gear or a simple gear train if you take so this gear is meshed with this gear. So there are two parallel shafts. The axis of the shaft is perpendicular to the screen. So rotation of this gear will make the second gear to rotate. Also, there is 
a shaft or you can say a plate connected between the center of this gear to the center of this gear now if you fix o2 gear 1 will rotate about gear revolve about gear 2 okay similarly when you fix center 1 the gear 2 will revolve about gear 1 so this is the epicyclic gear train so here the figure shows an epicyclic gear train with two gear wheels so gear 1 is fixed and the axis of gear 2 is free to rotate about the axis of gear 1 along the arm. So O1 is the common axis about which the gear 1 and this arm can rotate. Gear 2 meshes with the gear 1. Now if arm is fixed then both these gears will rotate about their own axis and it becomes a simple gear train. So there are again different types of epicyclic gear train. So first one is when we have the external gear train. So I have just shown it in the symbolic representation that is we have one gear, the second gear and this is the arm as the same combination what you can see here. This is when both the gears have external teeth. The second is when one of the gear has the internal teeth that is the larger gear has the internal teeth and the smaller gear has the external teeth and this will rotate. Now if you see here when there are external teeth the direction of the two gears are opposite to each other but when it comes to internal teeth the direction of both the gears will be in the same direction. That is if this gear rotates in clockwise or counterclockwise direction then the smaller gear will also rotate in clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So this is when there is an internal teeth for one of the gears. So certain modification to this internal teeth epicyclic gear train we get the third type of gear train that is the sun and planetary type of gear trains. So we have one larger gear with internal teeth. In the center we have the sun gear surrounded by the three planetary gears. So the planet and the sun gears will have external teeth whereas this larger gear which will house the sun and planet will have an internal gear. So the basic application of this epicyclic gear train is transmission of high velocity ratios and in the differential gears of automobiles this epicyclic gear trains are used. So that's all friends in this video lecture about the gear trains. So if you have liked this video explanation you can share this video with your friends. Please like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. The links are in the description below. So friends, thank you very much.